Um, this is Wolf, I'm Dennis, and Hello. we will give this presentation uh, together. I will start with a little bit of talking about what we actually are doing and what we want to show you and what yeah, the tool we want to present today can do. And uh, Wolf will uh, show you a live demonstration uh, of this tool then later. The main motivation for this talk today is um, we want to show you how to use uh, a tool named JoomDD. It's a uh, yeah, model-driven development infrastructure for Joomla extensions uh, for creating Joomla 4 components. Um, we presented uh, a state of this infrastructure before, and uh, yeah, starting in Prague uh, three years ago and last year in, uh, in Poland and in Rome. And uh, yeah, <coughs> now we, uh, you are the first uh, at JAP to see it uh, for Joomla 4. So who of you uh, developed an own uh, Joomla component? Okay, uh, most of you. And uh, I hope you can, uh, yeah, you, you, you can, um, uh, you are on, the, on, my, on my side when I uh, present these typical challenges during the development of Joomla extensions. Um, one thing we, uh, we figured out during um, our uh, yeah, de development uh, projects uh, over the last decade was that uh, when we had new developers in our team, uh, they had big problems learning the code structure, the file structure, Joomla requires for working with the component, uh, for instance. Um, you have to learn this and when you have this, you can use the sophisticated extension mechanism on Joomla, everything is fine, but you have to learn it beforehand. And that's not, not pretty easy, especially if a new Joomla version comes out, you have to learn the new structure, um, you have to migrate your extensions, and uh, this can require a large amount of effort for the migration. Another problem or another challenge you have during, your, um, during the development of extensions uh, occurs or comes up if you um, have dependencies between your extensions. If you have components which depend on other components, you use a model or data of another component, or if you have a module which depends on a component and you have to know the, how the component works. This can be easy if you uh, augment your own extensions, but if you have a third-party extensions, you want to augment with an own module, you have to learn the structure of this extension as well, and this can, be, uh, yeah, can require some effort. And yeah, the last uh, point, the last or last big challenge you have uh, during the development, of course, is the migration to the new platform versions of Joomla. Um, we developed uh, since or extensions for, for Joomla 1.0, and we had to migrate our extensions to 1.5, and then 1.6, 1.7, 2.5, and, and 2.3. And every time we required a lot of time and um, we had a lot of developers in, in our uh, institute, in academia, in a university. And um, yeah, we figured out that we need something to help us, to support us during the development and the maintenance of our extensions. And yeah, that was the birth time of JoomDD, which we developed the last, in the last years uh, together with students, but uh, yeah, mainly with three people actually. Um, JoomDD consists of uh, a domain-specific language, which is uh, really straightforward. You have um, yeah, a few um, model or language uh, parts you have to create uh, during your model development. With model, not a Joomla model, not a model in a component, a model which you use as input for co-generation. Um, the, the model has three main parts, which you have to uh, define. One part is for the data management, one part is for, yeah, for, the, for the representation and uh, page flow and interaction. So actually what the views are doing in the component and the whole MVC stuff in your component. And uh, yeah, an extension part where you describe the metadata of your extension. So you describe which languages you, you support, uh, names, authors and all that stuff. And you define which MVC structures or which representations of which data you want to have in your extension. So everything comes together and it's actually really, really straightforward because if you are new to it, you have to learn the language as well. But uh, it's not too hard to learn a language. And uh, yeah, based on that language, um, we created a code generator for starting with Joomla 2, uh, with yeah, Joomla 2.5. But uh, we um, put more effort in the development of uh, Joomla into the generator for Joomla 3 and in the last weeks for Joomla 4 as well. So we support actually three Joomla versions, but to be honest, Joomla 2 
is uh, not part of the IDE anymore. Yeah, how to use it? Um, we started with plugins for Eclipse because we used the Eclipse modeling framework for this infrastructure. And when we have been in, uh, in Prague a few years ago, the developers in the audience told us, hey guys, it's a cool project, but no one will use it because no one uses Eclipse any longer. We use mm -hmm. PHP Storm or other JetBrains IDEs, so you have to port it to JetBrains, otherwise we will not use it. Then we started uh, porting it to, uh, to PHP Storm and IntelliJ, but we figured out another step would be um, if we make it completely platform independent so anyone can use it without the whole installation process, installation party into an IDE. You need plugins, you need to have uh, plugins which our plugins depend on, and this requires at least 15 minutes, but uh, using a web IDE, which is completely platform independent, you can work with it directly in minutes. That's the, that was the intention behind it. So in the last year, we um, put some effort into this web IDE, and the demonstration today will also be in this web IDE. So we show you how to use the web IDE. It's online, you can use it, not during the session, but afterwards if you want. Um, you can use it during, but then you are not, cannot listen to what we are talking about. Um, and in this web IDE, we incorporated all of our yeah, functionality. We have an editor, I can go through it, it's not important. Um, before, if you, if you use the web IDE, you can create an account. Just uh, username, password, and then you, your, all your stuff will be, will be stored um, persistently. But you can use it without a registration as well. So you can just try it out and work with it. Um, yeah, we have an, uh, an, an editor for our, for our model. We decided for a text-based model. That means uh, you don't create kind of UML diagrams, you create a textual model because it's more, our, our targets, uh, target group are developers for Joomla and the most developers prefer, we made some interviews to find that out, prefer um, a kind of modeling or configuration which is uh, closer to typical yeah, programming and not this uh, visual stuff. Um, therefore, we decided for this textual model. We have uh, live validation in this editor. We have uh, auto completion in it. Um, you see some. You can uh, make the, the the window bigger, the editor bigger, and so on. We provide some example models which you can use to get started. Because of course, it's a new uh, domain-specific language, a new language you actually have to learn, and this is hard. And uh, the documentation we have by now is. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, most uh, a lot of developers learn more if they have the actual code or the actual model and go through it and see what it does. And uh, therefore, we um, created some example models, um, very simple models and more sophisticated models to show what you can do with it. The language um, allows a very detailed modeling, but you can uh, you create very abstract models as well, and the most of the stuff is generated by default, with default values. But if you want it more individual, you can do it with the language as well. But because we don't have that much time, and lunch is after this uh, session, <laughs> um, we will uh, just uh, show the, the simple model in there. Okay, model folding, yeah, typical stuff you need. And of course we have a code generator in there, where you can decide if you want to generate it for Joomla 3 and Joomla 4. The good thing is, um, if you have your model defined and you uh, um, want to create the extension, and the extension is yeah very has a standard form and it's not much individuality in it, you can directly generate it for two platforms if you want and uh, without changing anything. Now the generator does all for you. Yeah, um, you have in this web IDE your 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 yeah, your, your, uh, your source tree with the model in it with the uh, ex the generated code, you can uh, download this code and you can try this out. We will see it later. In addition, oh, in addition we have a uh, model extraction tool. Um, this model extraction tool, kind of reverse engineering, we implemented um, has the motivation, the intention for supporting developers during the migration step or during augmentation of existing third-party components by new model, for instance. Um, so if you have an extension and you want to use this extension as, as a base for a new model, uh, for a new module or for a migration, you can use our tool 
to extract model information into our um, editor and then augment this model and generate code anew. You can define in a model if you want to generate all or just some parts, like um, if, you, if you want to augment a third party extension by a new module, then you don't want to generate the, the, the component again. You only want to generate the module and you can define this in the model <laughs> as well. Very complicated with model module. It will become clearer when you see the live demonstration. <coughs> well, for the, for the hardcore developers who don't want to use the platform dependent web IDE, of course we have these plugins as described before. Yeah, these are the use cases um, we focused on during the implementation of our tools. Um, of course, the, yeah, the first use case, the simplest use case is the, yeah, the, the forward engineering use case. You um, create a model and generate the code, kind of boilerplate generator, but more sophisticated than the, the, the boilerplate you have in PHP Storm, for instance. Um, because we, you can di directly generate the list views, the detail views uh, for front end, for back end, and uh, yeah, dependencies between entities and so on. Everything is generated. The second use case is actually the, the use case where you have your round trip engineer or your iterative development when you change something in the model. The code is generated anew, and fortunately, we work with interpreter languages here, and like PHP. So everything what is generated anew, you can directly copy to your running website, and uh, it works. Yeah, so you don't have to compile anything. That's a, that's why this approach is very suitable in yeah in domain of Joomla extensions or content management system extensions in general. Yeah, the augmentation um, use case um, describes uh, or, uh, or, the, or comprises the um, extraction of, an, of model information from an existing <coughs> extension, which you can augment on model level, on an abstract level, and then generate the augmenting extensions, which can work together with the existing extensions on the running system. So if you have a third party component on your website, you want to augment it by a new module, you can um, yeah, you, you, you can use your ex the existing component as input for the reverse engineering tool for this model extractor, um, change it on model level, augment it on model level and generate the module, install it to your site and it should work together in the best case. It depends on you, on the extension. Um, yeah, and the last use case of course is the migration. Um, fortunately Joomla 4 is, uh, is on the run and comes, uh, so we have um, an example to work on to show how the migration from Joomla 3 to Joomla 4 works. So, a lot of talk, let's come to the demonstration. <laughs> um, a demonstration today, to, be, to stay in time, will uh, show the development of a conference management component. So we have uh, a small set of entities we want to manage, um, but it doesn't depend on the amount. If you want, you can create a component with 200 entities doesn't mind. And uh, for each entity we want to have the typical Joomla pages for, uh, the, for the management, like the list views, the edit views for the CRUD, uh, uh, for the CRUD operations and so on. Here yeah, we have the conference model, we have participants, talks, a program and a room. It's very simple and I think in that short amount of time we can show you how JoomDD works. This is uh, what we um, what we expect uh, from, the, from the component in Joomla 3. Yeah, it should uh, look like a typical Joomla component, follow the Joomla <coughs> standards, look, um, uh, yeah, work homogeneously with the rest of the Joomla page as it should be. Nothing, um, yeah, nothing uh, weird, um, uh, individual stuff inside your, your Joomla, ex uh, uh, Joomla instance, it should should just look like the rest of Joomla. And in Joomla 4, and in the front end as well, so we see here, we have the typical uh, buttons here, the toolbar, we, uh, we can uh, click on an entity and yeah, edit it and so on, the typical stuff. In the front end the same, and we want to have the same for Joomla 4. So the component should look uh, the same in Joomla 4, should work homogeneously. Um, yeah, if you click on an entity, you should see a detail view. Um, something we didn't implement yet is the, the group button, which uh, you should implement for 
safe, safe, uh, and you safe and close, uh, safe and copy. That's, that's on our list, but we didn't implement it till now. But the rest is working, like uh, using the filters, uh, search, sorting, and so on. And the same for the front end. But we are working on the front end now, so we have these J table options here. It's just because of the migration of our generator. Well, <laughs> let's come to the demonstration. Okay, thank you, Dennis. So, uh, what we want you, what we want to show is uh, our web editor here. Um, it's online, it's public, you can use it after our session. And here's a nice landing page with all the details and more information, documentation and how to get in uh, touch with us if you have some issues or questions. And uh, here we have our um, web IDE um, <coughs> with uh, yeah, button, various buttons for the generation, uh, Dropbox if you want to generate Joomla 3 or Joomla 4. Uh, we can load example models. Um, in our demonstration now we will use the conference model. Um, I just click on it and it will be loaded into the uh, editor. And um, to show it better, I will just pause this. Um, yeah. We have the uh, three, ma three main parts here. We have the entities, uh, which is your data modeling, which, uh, yeah. The, all the database tables and entities um, attributes for the tables are listed here. Uh, so we have the participants, we have the attributes, talks, and the references between them. <coughs> what else we have is oh, here we have uh, the pages. So we want uh, in the back end and front end, we want to have um, participants, uh, a list of participants. So the typical uh, Joomla list view with all the CRUD functionality. And what else we want is a detail page where you can uh, create or edit a participant. And uh, the same goes for talks, rooms, and program. And as you see here, for each page, the pages are actually um, the abstract definition of a whole MVC in your component. So if you want a model view controller for a participant, you only have to define um, yeah, the participant entity, refer to it in this page, and <coughs> the page, you see it here, and uh, these are options you, to configure you, you, which column, uh, columns you want to show of that entity, so which attributes of the entity you want to show, which filters you want to have, which have to be generated, and uh, you can define links to have an interaction between the views you define so that you can, uh, def as we defined here, we have a list view, we want a link from uh, the name, so when you click on the name of a participant, we want to uh, get a link to, uh, get link to the edit view of this participant when it's generated. And um, you only have to define this page once, independent of, uh, of where you want to use it. If you want to use it in backend or frontend, the generator automatically generates the required views then. So later in the in the model, maybe you can go uh, down to the extension part, yeah. you define uh, for the front end and the back end section which pages you want to generate. So uh, where you want to use the page, in the front end or in the back end. And if you use them in the back end, then we generate the, the list view and the edit view. You don't have a detail view in the back end usually, you only have an edit view. And in the front end, you have a detail view as well, so or you use the edit view as a detail view. So when you, as a user, click on the on a uh, list item, you see the details of this entity, like the details of a participant. But um, if you don't have the permission, you are not allowed to edit this this participant there or this entity. So the generator is smart enough to know or to generate the required um, yeah files if you want to use them in front end or in the back end. And this is, here you see you can reuse your pages, your defined MVC structures um, for the front end and the back end. And also for modules if you define one, but it's not part of this session here. Okay, uh, so we have that nice uh, conference model and uh, now we can choose to uh, generate code um, for Joomla 3, for example, first. And uh, yeah, just click it, takes a, some time 
but then uh, you get the message that all <laughs> went good. And uh, here in, the, in your workspace tree, you can see there's a, a new folder, source gen, which uh, contains your new uh, conference. And, um, and under new, there's our new yeah, component. We just uh, defined as a model and now generated here. And as you can see, it's a uh, yeah, typical Joomla free uh, structure and all necessary files, uh, the MVC pattern is generated and um, yeah, the linking between uh, the entities is generated and all that um, is now here generated. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we can just download it. Yeah, maybe let's say some words to the oh. structure here. Okay. Uh, we know there are actually two approaches how a structure of an installable component should be. Um, in the first case, we developed it with the typical site and admin structure and all the files in it. Uh, but we are working together very strongly with Roland. And Roland says, actually, the most <laughs> developers do it in that way. So in the, same, uh, in the same structure you have when you install it to a Joomla instance. And that's why we decided to do it that way. Um, but we had some interviews in the past and uh, the developer stated that actually half of the developers do it the other way. So we are struggling a little bit which uh, structure is the best and um, we are thinking about creating a kind of an option where you can decide if you want this structure or this structure generated. But currently we only develop this structure. Another thing in this, uh, in this generated structure you can see is this update folder. Um, this update folder um, creates the files for, to support the second use case for iterative development. So if you change something, or actually every time you generate, um, we generate the, the, um, the, the, the files into a different structure where you can use the files directly and copy them to your existing component yeah, for, to override them and for this second iterative uh, use case. So this is in there and um, you can use the files um, even in different extensions if you want, uh, but then you have to change the place, so, but it's, it's more difficult. Okay. Okay. okay, now we can move so, on. So, and uh, now we can show you what we get without programming a single line of code. Um, we have a Joomla free page here, and uh, I just downloaded the package, our uh, Joomla free, my conference um, component. And um, yeah, let's just install it. <coughs> and if everything is fine, the server's a bit slow, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, we got a new component installed and now uh, we see what we actually want to uh, wanted to achieve we have participants a participant list talk list a rooms list and program and um, we, what else we can do is uh, we can create new participants we get a detail list <coughs> put my name in it uh, the type of the fields uh, can be defined in the model as well so it uh, can be defined very simple, just text or text field, uh, but you can do it in a sophisticated way as well. And as you can see, uh, if we created a new participant, we get uh, more information, more uh, yeah, functionality. We can now edit a, edit a participant, delete it, unpublish, trash him, etc. Um, the also the sorting and filtering is working. Okay, with one it's <laughs> yeah. not so. Uh -huh. Okay, but uh, as you can see, without uh, programming anything by hand, you just get a, a, a conference model, a conference component with the typical list and detail views. But Joomla 3 is outdated. That's yes, and that's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's because, oh. So we, uh, in the last few weeks, we uh, modified our generator to also support Joomla 3, uh, 4. And uh, we just take the same model 
um, choose Joomla 4 and generate a new. And then uh, what you can see is that after some loading, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually not. Vielleicht am Netz. Never took so long, so I got a little bit wrong. It's live but on the live server, it's not local. So. Okay, what uh, we get now is the Joomla 4 folder. Um, same structure, new. And um, as you can see, for example here, it has the new uh, Joomla 4 file structure and uh, all the new files in it. And um, um, same as with Joomla 3, we can just download that package, go to a Joomla 4 page, log in. Um, and install the new generated package for Joomla 4. Uh, this one. <laughs> Otherwise, we get there with the And it should similar um, should look similar to the Joomla free component. Um, yeah, and it does. We uh, get the participants, talks, rooms. We can uh, create a new participant. Uh, Dennis here, or the THM. Yeah, and it looks good. You got uh, the filtering, the sorting, everything works, the grad functionality. And with just uh, four clicks or three clicks, you get uh, your Joomla 4 component if you have the model here. And even for the, for the front end? Yes. Uh, you didn't show that. Um, I can show. Menus. Where is it? This one? Oh, that's fine. Uh, may I? Ah, yeah. Conference, I uh, want to show the participants. Okay. Okay, there we have some issues with the language. <laughs> um, it's published, main. Okay. So we have our participants. The part, part was part. What? Oh, this was an old. Oh, one. that's an old one. Test okay, one. sorry, participants. Part. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> saw it. And yeah, we have the same uh, view, like in the back end, just now in the front end. And As I said, when you click on that, is here. Yeah. We didn't test that, but I think it should work. You see this uh, detail <laughs> view, not an edit view. And if you have the rights, and you are logged in, you can log in. Maybe I think you are. Super user. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. you can edit and delete in the front end as well, and it is also working. Okay. okay. Um, should we can show the model start. extraction? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's nice if you have. Uh, if you already have your model here or example model, but um, what else you can do is uh, for your own component is um, using our model ex model extractor. It's not a Joomla model. It's a, we mean a actual model here, an abstract model. And um, yeah, you, we can uh, just use our Joomla free component, um, we have to up first upload it. Uh, this one was it. And then uh, you get another folder, reverse, because now we want to reverse um, yeah, an existing component and create a model out of it. You just select, uh, select the manifest file and then click extract extension information. And this will um, yeah, get all information out of your component. We try to um, yeah, extract uh, 
every little detail of your um, component and uh, that's um, and a new model is uh, created with your content actually this new model is not directly loaded to the editor that's yeah the issue okay. we have on the list yeah just select the new model and then load model to editor and uh, now you can see that we um, yeah have all the information we just uh, generated for Joomla free in our new model here. And we have even more. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. as you see here, we have a lot more. Can you can you scroll, can you um, scroll down? You have, we have much more model information in here because when you extract something, we want to uh, get everything you have in your extension. Even though the actual model we used for the generation beforehand was much, uh, much, much, uh, yeah, much more abstract. Um, when you extract something, you get at mo at, as most as we get out of your component, so that nothing gets lost during this extraction. And then you can use this model for further development. You can ref refine this model and work with it. But I don't think we have the time today. Yeah. So. With just some modifications, uh, you can generate your Joomla 3 component for Joomla 4. Okay. Yes. Slides. Okay. Um, yes, slides. Well, slides, slides, since slides. we have lunch afterwards, <laughs> we try to stay within uh, 30 minutes. Um, and I think we did it almost. So uh, that was it for us. Um, okay, we have some changes. The change of field type. Um, yeah, if you change a field type, um, it's generated completely anew. And uh, if uh, every field type you change, uh, which has um, effects or which affects the, the, the database, mm -hmm. you have to reinstall your component so that the update can be done uh, during the reinstallation. And all the changes you are doing which uh, do not affect the database can be directly copied to the existing yeah. extension. Um, it can handle many to many relations. Um, actually, it can, um, but I'm not sure what the current state is because we, uh, we, we removed something. Uh, it can, and what we create or generate uh, is uh, yeah, a new page where you see both, where you can, um, yes, actually where you see the relation table, the, the content of the relation table. It's possible, but I'm not pretty sure what the actual state is. Uh, we have to try it out, actually. but. It's, 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 it's proposed. When you have a many to many relations, usually yeah, you cannot show this one. In, is in, in between tables. Yes, and mm. uh, yeah, that's it. And what we are doing, we generate a new view actually for this for this relation table yeah. and um, show the the, the, the the contents of the actual tables. So okay. not the keys, but where the keys are referring to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Um, obviously, this is an out of the box. You're talking about the updates and making changes. How, how does that work? Can you give us an example of? If you assume you, 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 you built your model and maybe you want some additional validation or you want some special handling which doesn't get generated by your code. How does that sort of custom code then yeah. integrate it? Custom, custom code is an issue we are working on um, because that's usually a problem when you, when you have a model driven approach. Um, you, you can put your custom code to the code, but if you generate the files anew where you put your custom code, yep. then you override it. Um, what we figured out for our extensions or what we are doing in our projects, we um, put the custom code into other files, into helper files, and uh, yeah, don't override these helper files. That's what we are doing in actual uh, projects. Because um, there are uh, some approaches. Some approaches are that you uh, generate placeholders for custom code, and these placeholders will not be generated anew. But if there are some changes which have to be changed, this is actually a big problem in, in the worst case scenario. The best case, or the, the best scenario, is uh, yeah, putting individual code into different uh, into different files, and then refer to the files. But you have to. Uh, put that you, into the that you have to make it. That you have to call it, but uh, then it's just one line of code. But you have to do it by yourself. Currently, we are not. Uh, it's it's really hard to do. Yeah, right. obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can I extract the model from a MySQL table, for instance? Only from the table. Yeah, I, I don't have a component. I have a table, and I want to include that. I would like. I want to have my CRUD for that table. I see. 
Um, it's not from a Joomla component, but from an external component. The, the extractor is actually done, and he requires a certain uh, structure of an installable extension, a Joomla extension. So if you only have a file, it's not working. But if the file is part of a component, even though there's nothing else in there but a manifest file, then it works. So if you yeah. have an... Uh, you have to so, take, so create a workaround to, to make it run. So, so I have to create a manifest file from the database to then import it into your tool. Um, yeah, but you cannot import a manifest, the, the manifest file, yes. Yeah. The manifest okay. file, and in the manifest file you have to define which SQL file, you, mm -hmm. and then it works. Okay. Yeah, this is working. Yeah. Do you support like these very soulful components, like uh, history or tags or um, The we, we tried it out with these components. Um, the horizontal are the core components, right? Or the vertical, the horizontal, the vertical are the other ones. Yeah. Okay, um, and um, uh, I, we, we tried it out with them, but we, uh, but just for testing, not more. And we, it's part of the future work now for the next weeks, maybe together with you, because you are the expert for Joomla 4, <laughs> you are on our list, um, to, uh, yeah, to, to make the, the, the code the best way. And maybe to support all kinds of um, extensions. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, that was the question. Uh, in the form page have an image of the conference speakers. Yes, um, we have an uh, image as type as well. So there is a standard image picker, which you can, which is generated wherever one has the question. Um, and uh, yeah, this is working as well. So we also support images. Question? Yeah, so yeah. How the configuration, uh, the settings? Where do you generate them? The the settings of the, the of the component. Um, there are standard settings for permissions. Um, currently, we don't. Um, we are not able to create very individual permission permission settings in the model. Um, but it's on the list. But uh, most of it you can do in this extension part of the model. So we have uh, a lot of language um, parts there which you can use to config or create configuration for your component and what you can actually configure. The actual configuration then uh, takes place when the component is installed. But what you can configure, you can uh, define in the model. So yeah, but how do you know yeah, when you generate the code? How do you know that you have this switch in the, from the configuration settings? For yeah. What do we these and if this? We this use a default. We use a ah. default there. Yeah. yeah. So you, we need to. This is the basis to create a component, but then after we need to work on it. Uh, the more individual becomes, you have to do it by hand as well. So um, for, for more individual components, you use it the best way for the use case one. So for the initial development, like boilerplate, but a more sophisticated boilerplate generator. Uh, but if your component stays very standard and uh, not, not individual become, it's not becoming individual, you can uh, re yeah, re refine your model and regenerate. Okay, you can comp uh, create component parameters. Um, it was in the model, I think, we, we uh, extracted. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah, we extracted. Um, of course, this is something you, uh, you, you do in an advanced model or when you extract something, mm -hmm. but it's not for a simple model. You don't have to, then we do the default stuff, but you can create the parameters. That's possible, yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it did you guys plan something like copyright parts that when you basically create a new version of component that it creates the update SQL scripts? Yeah, um, actually we have um, we have implemented for Joomla 3, but we destroyed it during the <laughs> implementation for Joomla 4 a little bit, uh, but it's in there. And um, it's, it's not so easy because you have to change the version numbers. Um, we are thinking about a simple solution would be to change the version number by hand in the model and then it becomes generated for the update but currently it becomes the same number and you have to change the number and then you can use the update but the files are generated the update files okay other questions then uh, i have to say something enjoy your lunch <laughs> thank you for your attention thank you very much <laughs>